G'day team. Uh, we must be up to topic three now, working our way through the essentials book. So topic three are physiological factors affecting performance. Physiological, as the name suggests, physical. So in other words, what are the physical factors that affect performance? So good or bad news, you know, congratulations or commiserations, but the moment we are, we are born, determines a large amount of what we're going to be successful at in terms of if we're looking at sporting events, for example. Okay, so our racial group. So depending on, you know, whether we be African American, Asian, okay, whichever it may be, we will be, I guess, have a tendency to be successful in different events. Somatotype refers to our body type. There are three, I guess, traditional body types, which we'll look at a little bit later on. And again, which one you fit into as to which sports you may or may not be successful at. Stature, referring to size. So whether we are tall or short. So for example, if you come out at six foot five, there's a very little chance you'll probably end up being a jockey or a gymnast. But if you come out at six foot five, there's a good possibility you could be reasonable at basketball. Okay, the muscle fibre composition, so again the makeup of our muscles, whether it be fast twitch or slow twitch, your gender, okay, so they're the physical factors right, that will determine whether or not we can be successful. Now, just because you might have the right physical attributes for a sport doesn't mean you will be successful. So in other words, I've got all these things working for me, doesn't mean I'm a walk-up start to the NBA. No, you've still got to do the training and the hard work. Okay, what we're saying is if we had two people that were identical in terms of their training and work ethic, but one had all the right boxes ticked over here and the other person didn't, the one who's got all the boxes ticked is more likely to be successful. They've already got that genetic, uh, if you like, head start. There are then psychological factors that impact on how successful we'll be. So our arousal, how switched on we are, and our motivation, which comes down to our work, uh, work ethic and attitude. Same thing in terms of our year 12. It's quite often the students that work the hardest, not necessarily the smartest. It's the ones that will work the hardest. Okay. So, muscle fibre and composition. Probably going back to year 8 PE days, you'd have a fair idea that we can have what we call fast twitch and slow twitch people. Quite simply, when we are born, our muscle fibres are a greater percentage of one more than the other. So we are either a greater red twitch or slow twitch person, or we are a greater white and fast twitch. Okay, So the slow twitch people. Slow twitch fibres will produce less power, but are more suited to endurance events. As we've got down the bottom here, slow twitch people are more suited to endurance events. Also we've got up here, slow twitch fibres contract with one tenth the speed of fast twitch. So in other words, these muscle fibres, they're not great at making force, they're not great at making power. They contract at a slower speed, so they generate less force, but as a result, their body, well, the muscle fibres are able to work for a longer period of time. Whereas the fast twitch, all right, they give us greater power, but as a result, with power, short duration. So the moment you are born, you are going to be a greater percentage of one of those. So for example, Mr. Driver, probably no surprise, he is more a slow twitch person. So the 100 metres and 200 metres at sports day, I'm probably going to battle because I can't generate the power and the speed. But the 1500 metres, which is an endurance event, Mr. Driver is going to do all right in. Now Mr. Driver can hit the gym, build up his quads and his hamstrings and become quite powerful in his legs, and that will improve his 100, 200 time. But again, if I am competing against someone who's naturally more fast twitch, they're probably going to have the, the benefit. So definition, and again, if you're keeping a little definition book, another one you can pop in there, somatotype, a type or classification of physique or body build. So in other words, it's a classification of what body type you have. Okay? So, we generally have three body type classifications. Endomorphs. Endomorphs are our first people. 
All right, now if I get really clever here and get my pen out, hopefully. Pen, don't know what colour it's going to be. They are what we call our pear people. So, that sort of shape. Now, I'm exaggerating it, but yes, our pear people. So they have a tendency to have high body, higher body fat and rounded body shape. Now, am I saying endomorphs are unfit? No. You can have fit endomorphs and you can have unfit endomorphs, just like all the body types. But even a fit endomorph will have a tendency to have more weight or more power distributed around the lower body. So you then start thinking, well, what's the advantage of that? What, what, what sports would I be better at? And you go, well, hang on. If I've got, you know, perhaps more power around the hips, maybe I'd be a better sprinter. Fair point. Okay. What about a swimmer? Hey, we've got that little bit more higher body fat around the hips. Good buoyancy in the water. Could also work. Okay. So we start thinking, what's the benefits there? And then we go, well, what are the sports that we mightn't be as good at? Marathon, maybe where we're carrying that muscle or that body weight over a longer distance, okay? So our endomorphs are our pear people. Next one are our mesos, okay? Mesos, and again, I'll try and get a little bit clever here and we know how good I am with technology. Mesos are what we call our triangle people. So triangle people they've got more the muscular so tendency to have a high degree of muscular and lean body shape so muscular good strong shoulders so they're the people that are probably going to be pretty decent at shot put good strong shoulders All right. swimmers perhaps yeah because we've got good strong shoulders All right. they're the people that I excuse the email that probably you look at them and go oh they must hit the gym a lot no they've just got that natural physique okay then we've got our ectomorphs. Our ectomorphs are what we call our bean poles. Straight up and down, skinny little people. Right? Tends to have low degree of uh, muscular and very low body fat. So, example, Mr. Driver is probably going to get classified as an ectomorph. Tall, skinny, bean pole. And again, you go, well, what events would we be good at? Well, Maybe not things like shot put that require power. Maybe not sprints that require power. Hey, marathon suddenly starts looking good. Good long stride, minimal weight. Okay. So there are three main body types. Now, can we have unfit endos, mesos, and ectos? Yes. So I can have an overweight ecto. Right? It's not going to happen as much because of the body composition but we can still have overweight in all of these and we can also have fit in all of these. As much as an ecto is the bean pole doesn't put on a lot of muscle mass, can they still build up their muscles? Absolutely they can. So we can be a combination of the two or two of the three, but they are our main body types and generalizations of the body types. So we've just got the characteristics and as we said, we gave these examples as we went along. Endos, probably more power-based activities. You know? Mesos, also that power-based. And ectos, maybe the endurance-type activities. Okay, Body type and success. So, based on our body type, as I said, we can have the potential to be successful or less successful in events. And this is what the AIS used to actually do, so the Australian Institute of Sport. They used to go around to schools and they would measure people up. For example, for events like rowing, where they would measure people's height, they would measure their leg length and their arm length. And what they'd find is people that had longer arms were going to be better rowers because they've got the longer lever can generate more force. So they'd then invite them along to the AIS and train them for rowing. So those people are more likely to be successful. So it might be someone like an ectomorph. Tall, skinny, so there's less weight in the boat. Less weight means we're rowing, well, we're pushing less weight. We're able to generate longer levers, generate more force, okay? Same as our ectos we spoke about with dead weight. Endos, our pair people, having that little bit more weight over the course of a marathon, carrying that dead weight, right? 
over every kilometer over 42 k's will take more effort which is why an ecto will probably be more successful because they've got less weight to be carrying and as we've spoken about many times already the body type doesn't guarantee success body type means you are more likely to be successful but but uh, you need to ensure you're still doing the work then we come to gender so based on gender uh, uh, we can experience certain success or failings in our sports we've got there page 139 in the essentials now it will no doubt differ depending on which uh, version of the book you've got but you're looking for a table that would have the selected men's and women's world records uh, and it would have the events such as the 100, the 1500, the 1000 metres and quite simply it compares the world record for the men and the women okay and what we can actually find uh, so for example they're saying the difference in the 100 metres for the men and the women is 9% then we go to the 1500, the difference is 11%. So the difference is smaller in shorter duration events as opposed to the longer running events, the difference becomes bigger. And what that all comes back to is a hormonal difference. Right? So women will have more estrogen, okay, or have estrogen. Gentlemen with the testosterone, and the testosterone will help with uh, developing power. The other gender differences we have, men, generally size. Okay, Men are generally bigger, men will generally have bigger lungs. Bigger lungs means more oxygen. More oxygen means work at a higher intensity for longer. Okay, Again, bigger size will also mean longer limbs. All right? Bigger size due to Erythroproietin, which is a hormone in uh, gentlemen, which encourages muscle growth. Right, again, the men are able to generate more power. So you can see the power difference comes in because of the testosterone erythroproietin. The endurance difference comes in, dip bigger size, bigger lungs, everything like that. So we will experience uh, differences in men and women. And that's why we have things, for example, in golf, okay, They've got a men's tee and a ladies' tee, and the ladies' tee is closer to the hole. That's not because they're saying women aren't as good. It's be saying because, based on gender, women are not able to generate as much power. Okay? So it's taken into consideration. Right. Um, so what does it all mean? Well, there's going to be a difference in these records. That even if we've got the best woman in the world and the best man in the world, Chances are the best man in the world will win because they'll either have a greater endurance capacity or they're able to generate more power. Okay. Interestingly, to look at those records, you then look at swimming. And we go from a 50 metre freestyle where the difference between the men and women's record is 12% to you go down to the 1500 metres freestyle and the difference is only 7%. So as a swimming event goes further, the advantage is actually swayed towards the women. The question would be why? Why over endurance swimming would women become better than men? And the answer is all around what is the woman's role in evolution? The woman's role is to become pregnant, have children, so that the species can continue on. So everything around the woman is around looking after that baby. So as women go through puberty, the hips widen so that they can actually bear a child and they'll add a little bit more weight around those hips because that's safety, that's protection. So a little bit more weight around the hips, a right, little bit more fat stores, what's fat good at? Fat's great at buoyancy. So you think, just because of evolution and trying to look after the baby, Women have a little bit more fat around the hips, makes them a little bit more buoyant in the water, therefore makes it a lot easier for them to be able to swim. Aerobic capacity, well, we've already touched on this a bit. Males have larger VO2, okay. Female larger fat mass, which we just spoke about then. Larger fat mass doesn't mean I'm saying women are fat, no. 
It's just the way the body is made up because they want that little bit extra fat for protection, whereas males generally have a larger muscle mass. So therefore, men are able to generate more power. Erythroproietin causes an increase in red blood cell production. So, erythroproietin increases red blood cell production. What's the advantage of having more red blood cells? Hopefully you're thinking, well, more blood cells means carry more oxygen. Carrying more oxygen means I can work at a higher intensity aerobically. So there's the benefit. And there is a case of erythroproetin being injected into some females, athletes, to try and increase that. Highly illegal. Uh, and some Chinese swimmers did try it and did get caught. Right. So they're doing that to try and increase their red blood cells so that, yeah, they can improve their performance. Females have a lower blood volume, generally because of their smaller size. So again, lower blood volume means we've got less oxygen going around the body. They've also got smaller lungs, which again, less oxygen. So this is why over an endurance event, men are going to have the advantage. There is just simply more oxygenated blood going around the body for men, whereas for women, there's more oxygenated blood going to the fat. Uh, Muscular strength. So, men have larger amounts of testosterone. And again, testosterone is a hormone that has been uh, injected into female athletes in the past with, well, we can say disastrous results in terms of women probably shouldn't have beards. All right? As a result of more testosterone, men generally have a greater cross-sectional size of muscle. So when I say cross-sectional size of muscle, I'm talking that if we were to cut it in half, all right, and we can measure the size. Again, hey, if we've got a greater muscle size, greater cross-sectional size, greater CP stores, greater CP stores, we've actually got a greater anaerobic production, which is why men would then be better at anaerobic events. So that's the first part of our topic three in terms of physical, logical factors affecting performance. All right, so until next time, cheers, guys.